Hey, what's up everybody? It's Steven from Southern Arboreals. So today, I'm like, it's video day. Gotta work on my video for the channel. What am I gonna do? Simple, green tree python care. So today we're doing green tree python care and we're doing beer. So I like beer, I like reptiles. So let's get into this. Let's do it. Jesus Christ, I am definitely buzzed. Um, so basically, I'm gonna go over the first thing about green tree pythons is their size. So, different localities are different sizes. This is an Aru. Aru green tree pythons, they get bigger. Four to six feet. Um, because they're arboreal in the wild, they are on the slender side but in captivity because they're getting a regular meal once a week or every two weeks i like to do every two weeks um they do get a little chunkier so he is a big boy he's around 1300 grams um basically you know you got your arus that get big four to six feet you have biox that get four to six feet um you have smaller localities which um are like mana quarries um in other other localities pretty much there they might be on the smaller side like I have a mana quarry that is full grown but he's like three times the size three times smaller than Yoshi this Aru so basically um, that's one thing to keep in mind if you're getting a green tree python um, maybe the um, um, things you want to do things since so you want to do things I love green tree pythons. One more thing um, you probably need to know about green tree pythons is with proper care, uh, green tree pythons can live a long lifespan. Uh, a lot of green tree pythons can reach into their teens. Uh, there's even green tree pythons that can live into their 20s. Uh, basically, if you just follow basic care requirements. Like I said, it you know they're not hard to take care of. Um, I think that's a misconception that green tree pythons are hard to take care of. They're not. You know, if you're in tune with your reptile um, and you're observing them on a regular basis, you know, you're keeping up with feedings and mistings and changing out water dishes and, you know, doing everything that they require to stay healthy, um, they can th totally thrive. So, green tree pythons can live very long lifespans. It's like a dog, you know when you have a dog for like 10 years and then a dog dies? And it's like, well, green tree pythons live longer than dogs, so maybe you should think about getting a green tree python. I, yeah, I said it, I love you. I know, you kind of went back a second and you were like, wait, you love me? Yes, I love you, okay. Yeah, I tried to give you a kiss, but you wouldn't let me. All right, dude. You're awesome. Dude tried to freaking kiss me, bro. All right, so maybe you want to go over some housing for your green tree pythons. Basically, the recommended enclosure is either a PVC cage or maybe a vision cage, um, a two by two by two. I think that's a good size for a green tree python. Like I said, I'm drinking a little bit, so we're gonna. But basically, I keep mine in Exoterras. They are modified Exoterras. A lot of people don't agree with Exoterras, but um, I have been keeping my green tree pythons in these Exoterras for as long as I've had them, pretty much. I have one in a vision cage. I don't have any PVC cages. Basically, um, I say basically a lot. I do basically basic things because we're basic aim this. Or you can do a uh, PVC rack, which is awesome. You can uh, get a bigger size toad, bigger size toad, a bigger size tub, and make a rack out of it. If you go to this, 
right here, as you can see, it's a PVC rack. And I think this one's from Reptile Basics. Yeah, I think it's Reptile Basics. That's what we're going to go with. So, uh, like I said, Exoterras. We can go with PVC cages. Make sure that you modify those Exoterras, though, because we want to make sure that they hold humidity. Or go with Reptile Basics rack, uh, the tub rack. Or we can uh, build one ourselves. Another video, we can build a rack. But those are the examples of what we can use for housing. So let's go ahead and jump into a couple clips of what I keep my green tree pythons in. As you can see guys, I keep my male Biot green tree python in an Exoterra. It's a 36 by 18 by 36. It is a large enclosure, um, but it is modified. It does hold humidity. So basically what I did was I switched out the screen top for a plexiglass top. Um, as you can see right here, let me go ahead and focus. Right here, this is a uh, plexiglass. I switched that out and actually secured it with zip ties and uh, drilled ventilation holes. So it gets the uh, ventilation that it needs and it houses the green tree python. Did the same thing with this, um, same size 36 by 18 by 36, but I went ahead and did a modified top which is a PVC top, not PVC. Gosh darn it, it is a acrylic PV acrylic top. Yeah, acrylic tops, man. Uh, that's what it's all about. Uh, I'm sorry, plexiglass top. Um, and that is how I do that. And then I just go ahead and I mount the heat panel. Uh, let's zoom in, I'll show you. See, just use some uh, fly screws. Blah, blah, blah. That's how it's done. I haven't had any issues with uh, overheating because um, one thing is you'll want to attach that uh, heat panel to a thermostat. And then we have the boy Yoshi inside of his uh, PVC cage. I'm sorry, not PVC, a vision cage. And I believe this is the two foot by two foot by two foot, I want to say. Or it's probably bigger than that, um, but I'll have to look up those dimensions. Same thing with this green tree python female. This is the one that I hope is getting ready to lay eggs um, here soon. So I've just removed the perches. Um, I should probably put one back in, but I mean, I don't know. She's getting ready to lay eggs, so that's how I keep. Same thing, uh, modified top. It's a uh, plexiglass, so drilled vent holes in it hold it with zip ties and that is what I'm holding my green tree pythons in and I was talking about that smaller locality of green tree python which is the mana quarry um, this is my mana quarry I keep him in an 18 by 18 by 24 basically since I set up uh, this vivarium for him uh, he's been doing great. He eats every uh, two weeks when I feed him. Um, these pathos plants maybe not doing so good. They are still looking green, but they're not as full as I thought that they would be. Uh, maybe the soil layer needs to be thicker, so I might add some soil um, to that. And that is what we do for caging here at Southern Arboreals for our green tree pythons. Next thing we're going to talk about is uh, thermal gradient, basking spots, temperatures, everything you need to know um, about what your temp should be at for your green tree pythons. Unfortunately, my temp gun broke, so I can't use my temp gun in this video to show you what I have. But I'm going to open up this Exoterra for you. This 36 by 18 by 36, it's so beautiful. And I'm going to show you this. So basically, on your basking spot, which is located right there, that's where the heat panel is, you want this basking area right here to be at um, 86 to 88 degrees. And basically, um, that's the green tree python right there. That's a high blue Aru female. That's bluey. You've seen her before. So let me go ahead and explain to you uh, what a thermal gradient would be for a vertical cage. Um, since they are arboreal and they do go vertical. So let's show you 
this thing. All right, um, so focusing. Like I said, we're gonna do, um, this is the hot spot that the green tree python would be at, 86 to 88 degrees. Um, you know, probably 85 it could go. I mean, it could go into the lower 80s. 83, it's not gonna kill him. Um, maybe it was a little too warm for her, so she moved over to the side um, from that basking area. A thermal gradient would be on these vertical cages as the temperature being hottest at the top and the cooler temperature being at the bottom. So if the female was really feeling overheated um, or she wanted to escape that heat, what she would do is move to this bottom perch down here. And that's how she would uh, work her thermal gradient. So she would go from top to bottom. As in uh, other python species that aren't arboreal, you're gonna see it horizontal, your thermal gradient. So it's gonna be like your hot spot's gonna be on one side and your cool spot is gonna be on the other. But for these uh, snakes, you want your thermal gradient to be at the top for the hot, and at the bottom is going to be your cool side for the thermal gradient on these uh, green tree pythons. And that's about heating and thermal gradient on the green tree python enclosure. Now, if you're going to want to use substrate on your enclosures for your green tree pythons, pretty much you can choose either cypress mulch, newspaper, puppy pads, those actually hold humidity very well. A lot of um, big green tree python keepers use those in their PVC enclosures. Um, so let me go ahead and I'll show you some examples of the Cypress Mulch or newspaper. Um, either one I think um, holds humidity. So let me just turn this camera around, I'm gonna show ya. So basically like in Yoshi's PVC enclosure, I have the Cypress Mulch um, the cypress mulch actually, when misted down, it holds humidity very well. Same thing with the newspaper. When you saturate it, it holds humidity. Same thing, uh, cypress mulch in the bottom enclosure and newspaper in the Beox enclosure. If you are doing a vivarium setup um, for a green tree python, you'll want to go ahead and use that uh, vivarium soil with a drainage layer. Feeding your green tree python. Depending on your green tree python size, you're not going to want to overfeed them. You're not going to want to feed them a bigger meal uh, than they can handle. Especially with uh, baby green tree pythons, if you try to feed them bigger meals, it can result in a, like a prolapse. It's basically the rectum pops out so make sure that you're feeding your green tree python size accordingly. Um, like a large green tree python, I feed small rats. S between like a small, under a medium definitely I feed my green tree pythons. I don't feed them large uh, rats. Maybe like a ball python you could feed large rats or maybe you could feed like a blood python large rats. You know, bigger snakes eating those colossal rats like Texas rats, whatever we call them. But all my green tree pythons um, are adult size. Four of them are adult size. The Manaquari, I do feed him large mice, which is a good size for him. So I've never had any uh, rectal prolapses on my green tree pythons. So it's important to think of um, rat or mouse size when you're feeding your green tree python. Wink, wink. Don't feed your snakes, your green tree pythons, rats the size of chihuahuas. Because they might get them down, but they're probably going to not be able to shit that out. So, sorry, I used the S word, but it's true. We don't want prectal rollaps. Prectal rollaps? Do not want doing that. We don't want a... Just do not know no prolapses, alright? We don't want that in their, their system. None of that. No rectal prolapse. That's the word I'm looking for. One other thing you're gonna to wanna to know about your green tree pythons is hydration is very important. Hydration, hydration, hydration. Green tree pythons need to be hydrated because they are stubbing, stubbing. They will not drink if your tree python, 
in a vertical cage like the 36 by 18 by 36 that I have two of my green tree pythons in. Sometimes they're lazy. They don't feel like going to the bottom of the cage to drink water out of their water bowl. Fortunately, mine do drink out of the water bowl at the bottom of the enclosure. Just like I'm getting hydrated off of ballast point, it's, uh, and make sure that they have clean water. I make sure they have clean water every day. Every day is important. I can understand if you miss a day because um, you got busy with the kids or you had some stuff going on. But make sure if, on that second day, make sure you want to switch out that water bowl. Uh, misting. Uh, misting the enclosure down and also misting the green tree python down because uh, they will drink the water droplets off of their coils. They, they um, I don't know, let's say this is a perch. There's some beer in here. I'm a green tree python. These are my coils. I'm on a perch. The way that it coils like this, sometimes it holds water in those coils. Or they just drink it off their scales, whichever is, uh, you know, water is on them. Um, there's other things you can do. Uh, you can do elevated uh, water dishes. Water dishes that you can put up next to the perch. So the green tree python will always have a water source where their perch is. So they don't have to try to go down, but... I don't have those since mine do drink from the water bowls at the bottom. I don't know why, maybe my guys are special. Um, yeah, so basically hydration, hydration, hydration. Hydration is very important in your green tree pythons. If you're thinking about getting a green tree python, you have experience with snakes, you should take it up to the next level. You should want to get a green tree python. Uh, whether it's a display animal or it's because you want one like That's the one reptile. I've always wanted was a green tree python and I'm lucky enough to own The five that I have but it's like five green tree pythons. I never thought I'd have five of them You know and I don't care. It's like some guys have like Freaking a hundred of them or they have this and that and they breed them every year You know I want to get to that level eventually uh, so I just wanted to thank you guys for uh, keeping up with the channel, uh, supporting me, subscribing, doing all the great things that you do. Um, thanks to the people that have tried to support me or that have supported me doing these videos and uh, getting this content out to you guys. Um, it's just a great experience and I hope that you can learn something from this Green Tree Python video. That's pretty much it. I rambled enough. Uh, I've been drinking some craft beer, some Ballast Point, some Sculpin IPA bra. Uh, so make sure that you like and subscribe on those videos. And I will see you on the next episode. Peace.